This Olympic runner set all of his best times after he turned 30 years old, and he did it because he made this one change. Now, Carl Lewis is one of the greatest Olympians of all time. In fact, he won a gold medal at the Olympics four Olympiads in a row, and he's only one of six people to ever do that. He was trying to get this world record, but he was missing it because he had an extra like two or three pounds on him. So what he would do was he would try to restrict his calories and he would be able to lose those extra two or three pounds. But then when he went to go perform, he was flat. I was starving myself to keep my weight down. He would skip breakfast. He would eat lunch only half of the time. Then he'd have big dinners and he was eating meat, vegetables. He had oil, basically a healthy athletic diet, but it wasn't getting him where he needed to go. Now, Carl Lewis was a sprinter and a long jumper and a triple jumper. He was really quite amazing because he had a very long career. But what I'm going to share with you is how he got to the extra millimeter that took him from being an Olympian, being world class, to being a world record holder and a champion. And what that was, was a dietary shift. Now, you want to have lean muscle tissue, you want to have bones and ligaments and all that stuff, of course, but fat tissue that is extra. I won't even talk about the percentages here, that's for another video, but extra body fat is going to slow you down. So he knew that he could get the world record, but he hadn't figured out how to get his body weight a little bit lower and maintain his strength. So he met a man named John McDougall. Now, John McDougall is well known for having clinics where he's reversing a whole slew of diseases, but really he works with people who have very very bad outcomes for uh, heart disease. And he's able to reverse their terminal heart disease. So John McDougall and Carl Lewis got together and basically what McDougall had him do was go on to a high carbohydrate, starch-based, fully plant-based diet. Cut out all the animal products, cut out all of the oil, cut out all of the processed foods. So he changed his diet and he followed John McDougall's starch solution and what happened was he lost those few pounds but he not only maintained his strength he improved his strength and his power what did he do it'll take over god we gonna make it show the world that it's shining our greatness keep it real never gonna fake this till we make it till we make it taking off flying high like a spaceship take control take a shot what you're waiting for keep it real never gonna fake this till we make it till we make it yeah. he set the world record you were a vegan and you were running like yeah, that? Yeah, I was a, I was a vegetarian and I set all of my personal best at 30 years old as a vegetarian. Really? So for me, it was it was easier because my teammates, I guess because I was winning and I was, I, was a, I was the older one, I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. And they said, well, let's fall in line. <laughs> one of his training partners also decided to follow in his footsteps, but he didn't go all the way. He just had one day where he ate meat and every other day he ate like Carl Lewis did. And he still had the best training days and the best performances of his entire life. One of Carl Lewis's friends was an NFL linebacker who did this as well and was able to maintain all of his muscle, all of his bulk, and still perform better than he ever had before. You can keep whatever weight that you want based off of how much you eat and the training that you're doing. So this can work for you if you wanna keep all your nice muscle, if you wanna run really fast for any athletic performance. In fact, a lot of athletes who aren't runners, who are power lifters, who are world's strongest men, they eat a plant-based diet as well. It is really great for your performance. When I started the diet in 1990, I was 29 years old and everyone said it was time to kind of pack it in because you're too old to do this and you're too old to be a sprinter and all of that. But since then, I've obviously had a much better time in eating. I have a better opportunity to keep my weight in, in check. And then the best thing is that all of my personal best performances have come since that time. And he said this, I used to think that I had just one more Olympiad in me. I used to think that I was about at the end of my career, that maybe I had about two years left at this level. And then he made this dietary shift. And not only did he go two years beyond that level, he did an entire four other years and an entire other Olympics in 1996 after that. It really elongated his career and he just got better and better, even at Atlanta, even at his last Olympics. So if you want longevity, in your training and in your racing. If you want health, if you want ideal weight, if you want ideal performance, then maybe we can learn something from what one of the greatest runners of all time has done. So here's how he did it. In the mornings when he's training, he would do green juice, 
then he would do fruit, then he'd have a cooked meal. But when he went to actual race day, when he was at these meets, he would eat a little bit lighter in the morning and he would have just a little bit of juice or maybe some toast. Now he normally didn't start his days with toast, but on meat days he would. But then he would eat lighter, maybe only a couple hundred calories. And he'd go and he'd compete all day and he'd have multiple events that he's doing over maybe a seven hour period. And he just had his track bag where he put some raw fruit and he would snack on fruit in between the events. And these are the days when he's really going for top performance. And these are the days where he would have a light breakfast and then only raw fruit. And he would get his best performances ever. Now, I want you to think about this for yourself. Perhaps your performance is getting better and better over time, but perhaps you want it to get even better. And in order to do that, I really encourage you to, instead of focusing on training, to focus on your diet. Because Carl Lewis, his training was about the same throughout all of these years. He would try small different tactics here and there, but his training largely remained the same. But his diet changed and his performance got a lot better. So what could that mean for you? If your training stays the same and doesn't get harder as a distance runner, do you think that you're gonna be able to avoid injury? Because if you're not injured with the mileage you're running right now, and we don't increase it, you're not likely to get more injured. But you'll probably shed some extra weight. You'll probably recover just a little bit better. You'll probably sleep just a little bit better. You'll digest a little bit better. You'll have a little bit more energy reserved for running, for competing. And this is what I see with my runners as well. We do a three-pronged approach, but the structure of your training, that's normally the, the point at which we connect and why people come to me because they think they want a better structure of training. And it's very true. You do want to have you know, the best training that you can, but I'm telling you that without a proper diet, if you're putting shit in, you're going to get shit out. And maybe that level that you can attain before it really limits you can be quite high. But if you really want to go to your best, it's not just about training harder. It never is. It's about doing the lifestyle things that are going to lead you into a better performance. So, if you are trying to improve your performance, be it in the marathon, half marathon, 5K, over any running distance, remember, Carl Lewis was a sprinter and a power athlete. So anything from the 100 meters to the marathon and the ultra marathon, if you're carrying extra weight, and that weight could be from heavy shoes, heavy clothing, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of hair, I don't know, um, any weight that you're carrying, but the most obvious thing that you can do to shed weight is to shed body weight. Now, we don't want to shed body weight in a way where we're restricting our intake of calories when we're trying to train at a high level. Let's take a message from Carl Lewis and let's not do that. But you can actually eat more because if you're eating fruits, vegetables, and cooked starches, potatoes, corn, beans, rice, sweet potatoes, lentils, quinoa, millet, any of those foods, they're high in carbohydrate, they're high in fiber, they keep you very full, they're very satiating, and by having fruits and vegetables, and lots of them too, we're very hydrated, we're getting the enzymes we need, our digestion is just so clean and so easy that we can take the extra energy that we put into digestion normally and we can use it to heal our body, give ourselves energy to train harder. And when you increase your amount of calories from carbohydrate and lower them from protein and fat, you're giving your body what it needs. Your muscles want glucose to be able to function. Your brain uses only glucose. That's it. Nothing else. And if you don't have enough glucose, your body will take fat or protein and essentially turn it into glucose so that your brain can get fuel. We need glucose. And if you just give our bodies a good source, a clean source, so not fractionalized food. Carl Lewis also didn't eat refined foods. We're talking, you know what else is high in carbohydrate is candy, for example, but you know, that's fractionalized glucose. I'm talking about glucose that's in the food itself, in the fruit, in the vegetable, in the starch, in its whole plant form, the way that nature intended it. When you do that, your body composition will change. You'll be able to maintain or increase strength and power, and you can do what Carl Lewis did, and you can set a world record. Can you set a world record? Well, you'd have to train like Carl Lewis as well, and you know, maybe some other things, but can you improve your performance for you dramatically? Because a world record for him was a personal record and a world record. But for you, whether it's a world record or not, you can still set a personal record, can't you? And you could do this at any age. In fact, the older you get, probably the more time you've had to pack on some extra pounds and the more there is to lose. So you can go really fast. And in my book, 
run elite, train and think like the greatest runners of all time, we talk about this. There's an entire appendix on the most successful research ever done on how to improve BMI by eating as much as you want ad libitum they call it so they eat until they're fully satiated with no restriction and we're able to lose more weight than any other study keeping it off at the six month point and the 12 month point and the two-year point and that study is in here but i'll tell you right now uh, if you follow any diet that is high in carbohydrate from a whole plant and there are many versions of this but for carl lewis it was the starch solution so i suggest picking up a copy of that if you like Pick up a copy of Run Elite, Train and Think Like the Greatest Runners of All Time, where there are hacks like this and so many more inside of there. So I hope that you enjoyed something here. I hope that you learned something. And do me a favor, if you're learning anything at all, if you like this or if you hate this and you want to argue in the comments, I'll meet you there. If you're respectful, I'll also answer your questions as well. But go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell. It does help with the YouTube algorithm, and we can share information like this with more people. It helps us so much. We're making these videos for you, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much. And thank you, thank you so much if you're one of our readers who's got the book and left us an awesome review. But if you haven't yet, go ahead and pick up your copy, Run Elite. Um, it's on Amazon right now. It's on Audible right now. Train and think like the greatest runners of all time. And uh, you're gonna learn three things basically. You're gonna learn the elite mindset and then you're gonna learn how to structure your training every step of the way, including uh, some bonuses, including a pace calculator for all your training paces. And then you have special hacks that the US military, the NBA and the NFL are using to increase endurance in as little as six days. So go ahead and pick up a copy of the book. And thank you so much for being a member of our group here and um, watching our videos. So take care and thank you for making it a success. And as a distance runner who prioritizes running, I have like hardly any fat on me. So it's easy to cool myself. It's easy to stay light. It's easy to stay injury free. <sighs> and recovery is better, sleep is better. It's all very good, very good stuff.